Hello everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, hi, I'm Cesco Linas and today we are going to draw some anemone flowers, which are my favorite. So grab your pen and paper and let's start drawing. First, I'm using this one image as a photo reference. I'm going to use two in total, which will be linked down below for you to use as well. And I'm creating two circles, one for the petals where they are going to be placed and the other one for the central part, which I'm later dividing into two circles, as you can see here, because it's it has two sections, the rounded part and the anthers, or those tiny uh, pollen producing parts. So I'm going to divide that. And after I'm done with it, I'm going to use Angular Sketch to sketch out the petals. This is mostly consisting of some triangles, different shapes, just to have that feel of how are they going to be placed in the sketch. You can go really loose in this stage and see which ones are looking like a center petal and which ones are looking more like a triangle or anything like that. And once I'm done with that portion, I'm going to sketch out the petals actually. I'm looking at the photo reference, zooming it in to see the shape of every single petal and then I'm producing that on paper as closely as I can compared to the photo reference. In this stage, you can really add a couple of details next to the edges of every single petal. They're always kind of messy. They have that organic shape. They're not super perfect. So you can go and add a couple of wavy lines, the edge of the petal to recreate that flowiness and the effect that they have. For this part, I do strongly suggest that you are zooming into the photo reference because it's easier for you to understand when you're looking at them one by one. They have some basic shape. Most of them are looking like a triangle or like a trapeze and later you can add a couple of uh, things here and there remove some portions so that it will look more like a petal according to the picture and once i'm done with that i'm going to shade in the central part which is honestly just a circle and for the anthers or those tiny details surrounding the central part I'm going to roughly see how are they placed. They're not like fully at center. They are a bit leaning towards the left side. And I'm adding a bunch of tiny circles around uh, the central part with some gaps. For example, at the top left, there's a bigger gap and the bottom right corner, there's a smaller gap because it's kind of angled uh, in that way. So I'm using a lot of small circular motions to shade in this portion to see how it will look when I'm going to ink it later. And if I don't like the placement, for example, I looked at the sketch and then compared it to the full reference and I saw that it's not super perfect. Something is missing at the bottom part and the central part is more like an ellipse than a circle. So I'm correcting that. The beauty of this flower for me at least, is that central part because it's really detailed and it has a lot of tiny things that you can draw, which I personally really like. So I'm really going to focus on that part and keep the petals as simple as possible because the flower is really delicate in that way. So once I'm done and happy with the central part, I'm shading in the petals from the center towards the edges, but I'm not going to connect the lines to the edges of the petal because I want to leave it blank at this stage. And I'm always referring to the photo reference to see how accurate it is. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. My suggestion here is to try to make it as close as the photo reference, I mean, as possible, because at the end of the day, that's your interpretation of that specific flower. The next one is a bit different, but the concept is pretty much the same. I'm going to focus on creating two circles for the central part and one circle for the petal placement to roughly find how it's going to be laid out in this sketch. And once I'm done with that, I'm sketching out the petals that I'm seeing first. So here I'm seeing 
four petals in total and some of the other ones that are behind which I'm going to sketch next and in this stage I'm kind of getting the feel of how this flower behaves based on the first one so I'm not going to use too much of the angular motion because in this photo reference they're pretty rounded compared to the last one so I'm just going to use some rounded shapes to loosely sketch out the petals because in this specific photo reference they're pretty standard like any petal that you are going to create with the standard flower drawings and doodles so my suggestion is to do that really go loose and see how you like it compared to the photo reference and fix it if needed once I'm done with that I'm going to focus on the central part and here again as with the previous one I'm going to add a couple of actually a lot of uh, circular shapes around the central part for the anthers but in this one in the photo reference that central part is pretty crowded with them so I'm trying to find the balance between not overwhelming the sketch because I'm going to ink it later and if I ink it a lot it'll be almost invisible so I'm finding the right balance and flipping the sketch to see if I need to add anything else and here because those that are on the outer edge are a bit darker and when you are noticing if you zoom into the photo reference the ones that are close to that central circle they're a bit lighter so I'm not going to shade them in completely and I need to be careful with that so I'm going to leave that part almost intact and I'm going to tackle it with this inking process. Once I'm done with the sketching and I'm happy with the result I'm going to use my fine liners. I'm pretty much always using 0.5 because that's what that one works <laughs> and I'm going to outline the petals first. When I'm going from the central part towards the tip of the petal I'm using pretty much a smooth line and when I'm getting close to the edge or uh, the tip I'm going to add a couple of wave lines here and there if I notice that in the photo reference that's going to add that organic shape and the flower will look more let's say natural compared to drawing if I am only going to use smooth straight lines and once I do that I'm going to ink in the central part or the circle I'm going to fully ink it with this black fine liner and if I notice that the outer details are a bit messy I'm going to fix it with an eraser and draw it with the pencil just to see if I'm happy with that and for this one because the anthers or the, the those tiny details close to the center are a bit lighter I'm not going to fully ink the central part I'm going to leave some things at the bottom to place those details as close to the central circle as possible so once I fully ink it black I'm going to add those tiny details and here I suggest because the photo reference is pretty easy to zoom in zoom it in completely to really look as close as possible into the central part and add a lot of let's say elliptical details to recreate those anthers or those pollen producing parts of the flower so I'm doing that in this stage I'm really trying to uh, replicate what I'm seeing starting with the inner part that's as close to that center first to not lose it in the inking process for later and then I'm focusing on the top outer edge and moving towards the bottom and going full circle to add a lot of elliptical uh, details with some tiny gaps just to have that feel of how it's going to be placed when fully inked so once I'm happy with the shape I'm going to add details in between at the top or the bottom next to these uh, details that I've already added also focusing that I don't overwhelm the drawing with the details because it's a 0.5 fineliner it's not too thin so 
having that balance between keeping it simple and adding a lot of details is something that is going to be mastered over time. Sometimes I do a lot of details and the drawing loses its shape. But in this case, I'm pretty happy with the result. Shading it and adding some overlapping details if you see that it fits good with the concept and the drawing is always a good idea. And here I'm looking at the shape of what I've drawn and it's not as close to the photo reference but it's my interpretation and I think it looks okay. And once I'm happy with that I'm going to ink the shading for the petals. I'm going really simple with this shading in from the central part of the flower towards the edges of the petals and from the edges towards the center and keeping it really simple in this instance because the flower is white so there's not much of a detail but adding a couple of shading here and there could add some dimension and really make the flower stand out. So here I'm using fine liner with at a bit of an angle so it's not at its full force but it's more like a dried out version of it so it's easier for sketch if you're unsure i suggest that you go with pencil first technical pencil if possible and sketch that out see how the shading looks if you're happy with it go with a fine liner or an ink pen and ink it out and once i'm happy with the look of the flower i'm going to focus on the second one again working from the petal outlines and adding details as I go. As with the previous one, I'm starting with the outer edge of the petal, creating a pretty smooth line from the central part of the flower towards the tip of the petal, but close to the tip if I'm noticing that there are a couple of wavy lines or any details, ruffles, I'm going to recreate that in the inking process. And here my suggestion is to always go slow. Sometimes the inking process is taking more time than sketching, but that's what you need to do if your hand is not steady or if you're unsure. Like sometimes that happens, that's totally okay. Take your time, sketch it out, and then ink it carefully if you're going for that modern botanical flower drawing look. And once I'm happy with the outline, I'm going to ink the central part fully with this black fine liner. I'm not going to add the details there because the outer details are going to be really what makes this flower stand out. And once I'm done with the coloring, I'm going to focus as with the previous one on the other details of the central part. Focusing first on things that I'm seeing that are really prominent in this photo reference. So first, to make it easier, I'm going to add a lot of lines surrounding that circle to help me out with the placement of those elliptical details for the anthers. So here I'm adding them. This is a pretty much the most basic elliptical motion um, and I'm going to start with some spaced out details to help me out with the placement of things and once I'm happy with that I'm only going to create two-thirds of the total circle to help me out with the placement because I'm noticing on the bottom right it's a bit overlapping the central part so I'm going to wait for that turn and sketch it out and ink it later. Here I'm adding some details to add a bit more dimension because it's not super perfect. Sometimes in some sections it looks more busier so I'm adding more details there and in some sections it's more sparse or spaced out so I'm keeping that in mind as I'm adding those details to really make it look as organic as possible and once I'm confident enough I'm going to work on the bottom right corner where 
those details are really close to the central circle. So I'm trying to fill that in without really overwhelming that portion of drawing. And once I'm happy with that, I'm going to add some lines from the central part towards the edge of the petals to sketch that part out and ink those shadings and also adding a couple of details, a couple of lines from the edge of the petal towards the center to really add a bit more dimension. And here I'm going to create that effect where the petals are a bit wavy, messy, uneven, and really replicating what I can see from this photo reference because in this photo reference it's a bit more visible where those lines are, where it's shaded in, where it's not, where the sun hits the flower and it looks almost white. So at this stage you can really go in, do as many lines as you can get, but I suggest for this specific flower is to go really simple and add a couple of lines here and there. And if you notice that you want to add a bit more dimension, you can try to add those shading effects where you're noticing that the petals are overlapping or that they are bent in a way where you can see a shadow on them. And if you're happy with the result, you can stop now and consider it done. Or you can go with your pencil and add a bit more shading in some places. But try to not overwhelm the petals because in this flower it's pretty simple. So once you're happy with your drawing, you can go and color it if you prefer or keep it black and white and simple like in this tutorial. And once that's done, you are pretty much done with your drawing. At the end, I do like to write out the name of the flower. So I'm just letting here anemone, really simple. This is completely optional, I just prefer to do that sometimes. And I'm going to sign the work to remember the time that I created this. And this is it. The drawing is complete. I hope you found this video useful. So if you did, please consider subscribing and hit the thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know down in the comments what you would like to see next. And until next time, thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.